This week, the much anticipated, well, it's anticipated for myself and others here on the show, tequila segment. Uh, Pedro is here with all kinds of tequila, so the show's probably going to get interesting. Uh, we're going to smoke, as the Stokey of the Week, the Carlos Torano Exodus 1959 50 Years uh, Cigar, which uh, I, will, I won't spoil it. We'll tell you all about that on the show. And then we're going to talk about tequila. We're going to do tequila sampling, which is going to be awesome. And then we're going to do Stogies of the Week. So stay tuned. All that and more on this episode of the Stogie Geek Show. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Hosempa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. The Vintner Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. This is episode number something. Sorry, we made 283. We made some changes. I don't have that in the same spot anymore. Welcome everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am here with Mr. Joe Hozempa, who is a trendsetter because... In previous shows, you were drinking from a metal straw. Yes. Now that's that's like a thing. Metal straw sales have skyrocketed. I mean, we here at the studio, we're trendsetters in that. We use metal straws here at the studio. So that should, that should make a lot of people happy. Trendsetter. That's it. Because plastic than, straws are evil. Uh, yeah. That, I, I, <laughs> like, like we all forgot how to sip. Like, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, you know, it's crazy. <laughs> if you, you can get an iced coffee at your uh, iced coffee favorite place. And just sip it, right? Like, you could. Yes, you could. I do that at home. Why, why was it different? Or you, if you go to Starbucks, you can get the paper straw that's in plastic wrapping and use... Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the paper straws, you, you got to stay on it because they get soggy. Yeah, they they're do. rubbish. I they like do. Them, that's what metal straws are the best. Aaron's here with us. Aaron, welcome. He's the latest addition to the Stogie Geeks crew. <laughs> um, thanks, Paul. Thanks for having me. Third week here. I'm surprised it's been a good run. Um, <laughs> I'm sure you will all be happy that I'm in Vegas next week. So um, if you see me, it will be in my Speedos um, by the pool. Uh, anyway, let's get to the... Now I need tequila after that thought, Aaron. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry. For the visual. <laughs> <laughs> you should learn by now. Never visualize anything I say. Now, Pedro is here with us. Pedro, welcome. Thank uh, you. Why don't you give our listeners a little bit uh, about yourself? And uh, well, we know each other from the security industry. Yes. And we spoke maybe five years ago at like a B-Sides Boston event. And you were like, I do tequila tastings. And I'm like, dude, we're friends. Like, we're, <laughs> it's awesome. Like, you need to come on the show. We finally made it happen five years or so yeah, later. Yeah, just about. Just about. Uh, but you're here with us today. So tell us a little bit uh, about yourself uh, and specifically how you got into the tequila stuff. So there is going to be no straws today. Okay, that's so we'll no straws that. on the table. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be compliant with that. <laughs> Brought everything in recyclable bags. There you go. <laughs> so we're not going to be uh, offending anybody today. Not early in the show, at least. And uh, thank you for having me over. Um, this is a great, uh, great place to be discussing uh, this drink. I guess we could have aged our own tequila by now. Yes. <laughs> we could have. We should have. So, uh, the industry has grown since then as yes. well. Yeah, tequila's uh, like off the charts lately. It's actually, um, the, its cousin, uh, mezcal, is growing even faster. Mm. Um, there's actually more mezcal um, distilleries and products uh, mm. rising than tequila itself. That's interesting. Yes. Um, it's actually a very interesting industry. While tequila is actually male-dominated, there's a lot of women rising in the mezcal. Uh, yeah, there was a, a couple we had on the show that have their own tequila and cigar brands. I can't, they're going to be mad at me. I can't remember the name of it, but we'll look it up in the break or something. Uh, so we have done, and we just sampled their tequila and their cigars, uh, which was very good. They make some really high-end uh, tequila really good and and you know the whole the whole spectrum Where is we'll it? talk about that um they don't sell it here in rhode island it's not distributed as far as here in rhode island so okay. i don't i don't have i think they do the 
Was it Total Wine and Spirits? This was before Joe was on the show, I think. There's Happy another tequila. There's another chain. I want to say it's Total Wine and Spirits. Over on Sakanase? I, maybe they carry it now because they opened okay. up a Total Wine and Spirits. So maybe we do have it. <coughs> we'll have to, I'll, I'll stop there. That's right up the street from the studio. I'm so. just going to have to come back then. I have to come back. We'll do more tequila sampling. Yeah. So, Pedro, how did you, uh, like, do you do tequila for a job? Like, what's, is this your job? or? Um, I wish. Yeah. Um, I don't. I've been actually, um, as, as early as I recall, I started drinking tequila on purpose about 18 years ago um, in California. Um, like many people, I was drinking a specific brand mm -hmm. um, at the time, Patron, before it became um, a much larger brand. And then I switched. There was a tequila out there called Porfidio. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's actually not distributed as much. Um, they got in trouble for standing their ground with the type of uh, product that they wanted to produce. They didn't sell out and they were knocked off the market. Hmm. Um, tequila has very strict production uh, requirements. So... For example, it has to be between 38% and 55% alcohol. Mm -hmm. um, here in the States, you only get the 40% plus, so mm -hmm. 80 proof. Um, and there is very few that are 110 proof. So Porfidio got in trouble because they actually had about a 39.9% uh, product. Wow. And they didn't want to sell the, their distillery. Mm -hmm. um, there is about uh, 1,300 distilleries uh, today. There is probably about four times that many brands. Mm -hmm. The actual way that you can tell what this, which distillery makes a, a particular uh, tequila is there has to be a label by law. Uh, so very much like um, champagne. Mm -hmm. um, it has to be produced with a specific appellation um, in a specific place with a specific process. And we can geek out into the process, or we can actually start drinking. Let's start minute. drinking, and as, then as as while we're, we're drinking, Joe can introduce <laughs> the cigar that we're, Absolutely. we're smoking today. Absolutely. Uh, but let's introduce the first Which one? We, this so, one looks like a glass of hot sauce. I'm really kind of nervous um, about that. There's, there's actually <laughs> a, so, so let's talk about what tequila is not, right? Tequila is not uh, mezcal. There's never a worm. There's never a scorpion. Um, what's mezcal? So what's the difference between tequila and mezcal? Mm. So mezcal is produced in pretty much um, about eight other regions um, mm -hmm. around uh, the tequila region, the Jalisco tequila region. There are, um, as I said, about 1,300 uh, distilleries. They export their product, and the product has to be harvested from a, from a specific plant. They could be grown in the mountains. They could be grown in the valleys. And um, they have distinct flavors. For example, the Highland tequila, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, has a sweeter flavor. It's a bigger plant. The plant is, it looks like a cactus. It's actually a lily. Uh, tequila is the most uh, intense product uh, to grow, uh, mm -hmm. to, to get to before you can drink it. Um, grapes, usually you can get in two years. Um, all of the grains you can get within the year. Tequila, you have to wait between um, eight years, uh, between eight and 12 years. Wow, that's even able... longer than cigars, which is very similar to cigars yep. and plants grown in different regions and of different species, produce different characteristics, flavors, and tastes. Absolutely. So, which, which is, if you think about it, it's ironic, right? For something that, uh, for a place that has a year-round growing cycle, for you to have to wait so long for that product to mature and be mm -hmm. able to harvest it. Mm -hmm. So what happens is this plant um, flowers uh, once it, in, in its it, life. It's the agave plant, right? And it's the agave plant. Um, what happened historically was uh, possums used to go over to the plant to eat the grubs. Mm -hmm. And while they were there, there was water that was collected. The water was actually dripping sugars that were fermented. So you had a whole area with um, drunken possums. So like it actually distilled tequila or fermented tequila fermented. in the fermented tequila yep. in the ground yep that's really cool yep and it's in the pockets of the uh, of the plant wow so what is this hot sauce drink <laughs> so it is it I is uh, can, i want to hold this up for the for my camera over here uh it, it looks like hot sauce yes it is it is very close to that um what happens in uh in mexico pretty much nobody drinks um 
o only the uh, foreigners mm -hmm. drink with salt and lime. Mm -hmm. um, and it's usually with a very harsh tequila. Um, and we're going to be drinking today from a wider glass. Um, the skinny glass is called a caballito. It looks like a, a shot glass, but it's longer. Mm -hmm. um, we're not going to be doing shots today. All of this is sipping, uh, sipping tequila. Uh, we don't have enough time or constitution to be actually go to, through the whole range. Mm. And uh, this drink in particular, if you actually want uh, so-called training wheels, is what they call them. Mm -hmm. um, they actually drink sangrita. And this is, this is actually, this is, uh, uh, everybody claims to have the best. Um, different places make it differently. This is a mix of tomato juice, lime juice, orange juice, and hot sauce. So it's a breakfast cocktail. Pretty much, pretty much. I um, like, I, 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 I'm digging yeah. this now. I'm is, it, is it from the same um, idea from like a Michelada? Um, because I know Michelada has beer in it. It's it's pretty much uh, similar ingredients. Yep. Yep. But it's it's actually uh, some places it's more like a salsa, so it actually has uh, consistency to it. Mm -hmm. In other places, like this one, um, it's much more liquid. I'm a fan and of so Michelada. Wait, in the what morning. is it, what is this called again? The sang oh, sangrita. 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 Very close to sangria. Just one more letter. Sangrita. Um, All right. Can we can we drink it now? You can, have, can we do, this can we do a, a cheers? cheers. Um, actually, this we don't we don't drink with this. This is the chaser. Oh, this is the chaser. Yeah. Oh, There's no, no tequila, tequila in this. No, no. You can it. drink it, but you don't toast with it. Ah, uh, wait. Course. Can't we just put some tequila in there? Uh, it's kind of like a Bloody Mary. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're we're following following process. Do, do we have any shot glasses we can drop in it? That will actually be a crime with these. Oh right. So if you actually want to do that, so let's drink it. So tell us about the tequila so we can start drinking. We're insulting people. So this one is called Avion, which means plane. Um, it actually, they make about uh, 20 different types of, of uh, bottles, mm -hmm. um, this distillery in particular. Um, it's, it's very good uh, for the price. It's actually one of the higher ends within that uh, mm -hmm. distillery. <coughs> and um, mm. um, I gave you just a little bit because we want to get through all three. Okay. It's um, kind of like a wine tasting. We, we don't spit this out. We're going to drink this. We oh, no, no, no. It, right? it, again, we don't spit in, we don't spit, <laughs> we don't spit tequila. No. It doesn't have so, a very heavy smell to it. it does, here's a no, toast. It's like, I'm going to borrow from Keith, who taught me, here's to all the good looking people. Thank goodness we showed up. <laughs> <laughs> that is a little light smooth. to it. Yes, yes, it does. <laughs> That's smooth. Oh, no, it's really yes. smooth. Really um, the reason why I chose though. the reason why I chose these um, oh. we're in a cigar show. Um, the younger tequilas are harsher, mm. Mm. much more um, floral, and they have uh, the tendency to pair better with. Uh, Wait, we're supposed to chase it with this now? You, you can, you can, yes. Ooh. Oh, that, wow. would, that would be nice with some vodka. In it. <laughs> I was just thinking the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a philistine. I'm sorry. Oh wow, that yeah, that's you could garnish yeah. that with some fruit and olives. Both. It's, I like Absolutely. the shrimp. Yeah. I like the switch swap. I like it's shrimps. It's like shrimps. Yes. Yes. Shrimp. Another one. Maybe I did a cheeseburger. <laughs> Celery. Yes. I did slider, another mini sip slider. that. Yep. You know, like that. Um, I also brought some chips today. Okay. Um, they're from my friend Jamie. Introduced me to those. Um, they actually have um. Chile and uh, the sweetness that you taste in there is actually the agave plant as well. So they're sweetened with the same. Uh, <laughs> Chips don't really translate well to, to radio. I don't know. I'm getting it in my ear <laughs> yeah. here. So it's like, um, it's like I'm chewing in everyone's ear. Yeah, it's uh, translating I'll tell you what, though, these well. chips are fantastic. They're jalapeno and agave, right? Jalapeno and agave. So it's yes. a little spiciness mm -hmm. with a little bit of sweetness, very similar to how we describe cigars is that balance between yep. sweetness and spiciness mm. yep and the saltiness as well mm. so this this should actually <laughs> go well with uh they, are we getting silly so early no you gotta <laughs> chew it on the opposite side of your microphone for oh. the listeners that's <laughs> what right. i did so take chew it on that side on that side i feel that, that i should um lick this <laughs> drink that <laughs> and then maybe stick that in my eye uh, yeah you go. can actually you can actually do that as well i actually um so again the the, the salt and the lime are called training wheels mm. so picture the the caballito which means a little horse with the training wheels on it, that's actually when you see people drinking their 
early tequila drinkers, so to speak, or they're drinking something very harsh. I actually brought some uh, oranges today. Wow. That, and what did you say the sangria was? That is uh, tomato juice, mm -hmm. orange juice, mm -hmm. uh, chiles, whatever hot sauce hot you want to put in it. Yeah. Um, nothing too fancy, no garlic, just straight, uh, not a straight lot of vinegar. Sauce. Yep. Yeah, so mm -hmm. tabac Tabasco is not a very good right. uh, ingredient for this. And uh, limes. Dude, that's so good. So you, you drink them together. If you actually want to be a little bit um, adventurous and, again, stray off from the uh, salt um, and, uh, uh, and the lime, I suggest you try some oranges and cinnamon. So, Like uh, put the cinnamon on the oranges? Just do the, you know, bite the uh, orange, lick a uh, little bit of ah, uh, cinnamon. Okay, so when I was in London... And this is the first time I tried it. You tried to eat a spoonful of cinnamon? Well, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, that. Have so you seen that? Have you seen yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> it might be on YouTube. <laughs> but it's like, um, I'm not very good with tequila, but I've only drank really bad tequila. Yep. And then the first time I drank, Patron was in Sorry. Vegas. The last time I was in Vegas, but there's a whole story there. Good so Lord, we'll can we not? No, we, we'll we'll story no, with no. Aaron is... Yeah, yeah, we'll stay away from that. But um, my friend introduced me to... Um, Orange, so it was brown sugar, like Demerara sugar, yep, like raw sugar. Too. So we did that, and then we did coffee Patron. Yes. And then we sucked on the oranges, yep. and it, it, it changed Wait, my so you, tequila life. You lick the cinnamon first, then you take a sip, then you do the orange. So lick, cinnamon, orange, shot. Can we try that quickly? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sure. Let's do this. So... So wait, do I have to lick my hand first to make it wet yeah, so no, the cinnamon sticks cinnamon. to it? Yes. Okay. I'm not not sure too much. Sweaty. I want Joe to lick my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Why Joe? Why not? Why not be <laughs> closer? That's why. <laughs> I can come over. <laughs> I'm going to log Tom. We can Tom. lick each other's hands. It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. We'll see if that's the biggest. <laughs> this will be happening next week. Yeah. This is, yes, this is definitely pre-Vegas. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Post Tequila Day. Tequila Day was a few days ago. As if we need one day to celebrate tequila. I don't know if you want to try this. Yeah, tequila yeah, yeah, should yeah. be an everyday celebration it is every day. In, in my mind. Yeah. It is every day. Take one. Oh, it's so romantic, Joe. <laughs> Did he look into your eyes <laughs> while he passed it over? <laughs> no, they were connected yeah, actually, and we broke wanna, it apart. You want to oh, feed him? <laughs> yeah, can you feed me the... <laughs> don't give him any ideas. <laughs> All right, so we need the cinnamon down here. Yeah, pass yeah. the cinnamon. This is way too much stuff going on. It's cinnamon, uh, oranges. Yeah, at, at two the end, drinks, you just uh, keep like drinking. Well, how are we going to get them to drink? <laughs> I, I, would, I can't manage it all. All right. That's well, a good cigar, hell. by the way. That's a good cigar. Are all we right. going to do it together? Oh, yeah, we got to. Okay, so a little bit of cinnamon. All right. That may so, be too much. <laughs> have I got am too I gonna, much? Am I going <laughs> to spread it around? Now. Is it yeah. like salt? Do I have to throw it over my shoulder if I spill it? So uh, wait, you lick the cinnamon off your hand first. Lick the cinnamon. Do oh, the orange. Do the orange. Or, or whatever. Ooh, that's way too much. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't put that cinnamon on my cigar. Uh, now little... the cinnamon in the ashtray. What if my cigar falls? I would be I, smoking cinnamon. I hope you're not going to go out to the bathroom afterwards, Joe, because that's a lot of cinnamon. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if he I, makes it there, he may uh, choke on the way. So like, I, I'm a I'm a computer nerd. Like order of operations is very important to me. So. <laughs> to tell you what, lick, lick, bite, shoot, lick, shoot, drink, uh, no, lick, I, lick, I shoot, only... eat, or lick. It's a zero eat, or a one, sick. all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's binary. <laughs> it's it's binary. binary. Okay, <laughs> lick. Yep. Oh, lick. Yeah, nah, mm -hmm. Drink. Okay. Drinking. Orange. Ooh. Orange. Orange. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm a boxer. Mm, this is the Godfather. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was an amazing experience. So yeah. you can now, since you have all the flavors there, you yeah. can try a little bit more tequila and see how that oh, changes. No, I, that's, too good. that's done. Oh. <laughs> um, I've got the bottle close to me. Do you want it passed over? There was like a drop left. Wow, that was an amazing sensory experience. Oh. Some more? Yes, please. So it's it's not wow. as it's definitely not as harsh as the <laughs> salt and the lime. Oh, that was too no, much cinnamon me. there. That's oh, just okay. my allergies. So just cinnamon on his cigar. <laughs> <laughs> and, and probably all that cinnamon you know, just brushed on my cigar. God. So now that we're done with the instructions, mm. smoke your cigars and 
Let's see where There's that takes you. There's just a lot going on. So, so when you yes, have some like sangria. So when you do tastings, do you do them for events? So how does that how does that um, work out? Typically, the, uh, the either um, distillery puts it together or a distributor, mm -hmm. or um, it's just a special event. There is a place in uh, Walpole, Mass, that um, has a really really good selection of tequilas. Mm -hmm. They actually chose these uh, today, and uh, they do special events where. Um, I come in, we speak about um, how they make tequila, these pairings, this exercise with the uh, orange. And by the time and midway through the talk, um, we're the heavy, feeling pretty good. The heavy plate comes in, mm -hmm. um, and then everybody's silly by that point in time. So, <coughs> now Pedro, you, <coughs> you work in security? Do you? I do information security, yes. I've been working in that uh, coincidentally a little bit longer than. Um, then I've been drinking tequila. So what is your role today in, in security? In information security, I am um, doing, um, helping with GDPR. Okay. Uh, so doing a lot of privacy as of late, mm -hmm. um, setting controls, a um, little bit of penetration testing, validation, vulnerability management. Nice. So pretty much, uh, you know, general generalist. See, now you have to ask me a question about cigars. This is, I'm, I'm testing my whole cigar conversation. So where is this cigar uh, from? It's a great question. Joe, do you, I think you researched this cigar. <laughs> so, so while, while we do earlier. that, yeah. Um, how does it go with the uh, with the with the añejo it, tequila? It's an amazing experience. Like the how? flavors from <coughs> the cinnamon with the tequila, and then the orange and the sangria in the cigar. Like, <coughs> it's really feeding my ADD, right? <laughs> I got a lot of stuff going on. <clears throat> and it just it makes for an interesting experience because there's all these wonderful flavors and, and taste happening on your palate. Um, I would say right now, having done several different pairing shows and experimented with pairings, that this is going really well. Yeah. Uh, this, this is like a home run in, in my book, and I would highly recommend uh, this to our listeners or anyone that likes cigars uh, to give this a shot because, I mean, it's, again, it's just it's amazing to have all these flavors Yes. going on and i'm totally going to incorporate this now in my cigar conversations thing that i'm, I'm trying to launch so yeah. mm -hmm. it's an er it's an earlier experience you just start losing your coordination later on and so you actually have to start with this eventually you just go to the sangrita and then you just keep drinking it straight um another thing that you can do is we actually have some ice um i recommend no more than an ice cube mm -hmm. uh, with these some of them um like the younger tequilas this is uh, yeah no this is good straight um, yeah. They're very yeah, good, really straight, good straight, but but actually, what <clears throat> you will find is some of them um, open up a lot more when you actually add a, a little bit of um, a little bit of ice in them. Because that brings me on to sort of whiskey, and quite often yes. they'll add a bit of water to whiskey rather than ice. Yes. So you still get the temperature. Does yep. adding water to it does that yep. bring out more flavor notes? It depends on the tequila. Um, what I found was there were some bottle, very expensive bottles that unfortunately don't taste very well until you add that drop of water. And is that the more high proof? It depends. No, okay. they're, they're all, uh, pretty much all of them are, are 80 proof. Okay. And what ends up happening is it just, it, it, for some reason, it doesn't, you know, you l gotta let wine breathe. Tequila yeah. just doesn't go like that. Okay. Uh, but it opens up with the ice uh, or just a little bit of water. And it's some of them, not all. Mm. Okay. So, Joe, I'm sorry, so tell us about this cigar. Uh, <clears throat> we are smoking the Tarano Exodus 1959. Uh, that came out uh, from the to celebrate the exodus from Cuba from the Toronto family. Hmm. What I think is interesting when you're talking about pairing, this cigar is draped in a sun-grown Brazilian Araparaca wrapper. Araparaca, right? You so gotta roll your R's there, Joe. Araparaca. With that being said, it's like you have the sun-grown, right? And then you it, you so. In a sun-grown Brazilian Araparaca wrapper, you have a lot going on. That being said, with the tequila process and, and the compliments with the Senorita, there's a lot going on in the palate. So it's kind of like when it comes what's to the, pairing. Uh, what's the, the binder and the filler in this one? Well, when it comes mm -hmm. to, um, to for your binder and filler is Honduras and Nicaraguan. Was that your binder or your filler or both? Uh, that is... That's a good question, Paul. Oh. <laughs> I'll pick yes, you on the well, spot. <laughs> no, 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 no. The, the inside has a mix of Nicaraguan long fillers from Esteli. Oh, <clears throat> okay. And the, is it a double binder? 
Paul, are you testing me? I am. What are you? What are you, I, I, is it a double binder? Because you said binder, binder was what? Honduras and Nicaragua. Binder. <laughs> what, what's the question? What's the question? <laughs> what is the binder leaf? Is it Honduran? The and binder Nicaraguan? is Honduran Nicaraguan. The. F- so it must be a double binder then. You know, a leaf from Honduras and a leaf from Nicaragua to make a double binder. Sometimes they do that. That's why I ask. Yes. I'm going to go with 70% yes on that one. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm tequila. And then the fillers are all Nicaraguan. And the filler is Nicaraguan long fillers. And the rapper you said was a sun growing in rapper Raka. Yes. From Brazil. Yes. It's a, it's a good, it's a good, I like this cigar a lot. It's an I smoked a couple cigar. of them before the show and I just keep coming back to it because they are just fantastic. It's, it's great because there's not a lot of spice or pepper component to this cigar at all. So it doesn't interfere with a lot of pairings, which is one of the reasons I chose it. It's very smooth and mellow and just has a lot of great flavors. It's got some sweetness, got some earth, maybe a little coffee note with it. Like there's a lot going on in this cigar. So that's a little about the cigar, Pedro, and, and some of the origins. We too talk about where all of the different tobaccos came from that make up your cigar. Now it's interesting in the cigar making process, I don't want to say that means nothing, but it's hard to make a determination that of what the cigar is going to be like or what the flavor profile is going to be like based on the geographic region because there are so many steps in the process to making cigars. Everyone does those differently from the type of soil and climate all the way to how they cure, ferment, and age in that process is different for everyone. And depending on how they've done those steps impacts the flavor. So you can say, I really like Nicaraguan long filler, which I do, except everyone's got a different process for processing their tobacco from seed to cigar, so it makes it different. And year to year, it may change, right? It could. Now, they try and blend such that it stays the same every year. So there is a little bit of variance from year to year, from crop to crop. And the master blenders um, know like how to adjust the ratio of how much of that Nicaraguan long filler. Now, that's a pretty general example sometimes they might have two different uh, uh plants or regions where they've got nicaraguan tobacco and the growing might be different so they may adjust the ratio like 40 percent of one 60 percent of the other but this year i'm going to go with a 50 50 split and it's going to keep it more uh consistent so the blender is actually responsible for making sure it's consistent from year to year most i would say most cigar manufacturers get it get it right like pretty close there are some in certain brands where they deviate enough that people that are smoke cigars every day and and review cigars like will pick up on it that's that tastes a little different uh many people may not notice that difference um and, and again that depends on the smoker's palate and depends on the skill level of the blender and also let's be honest how catastrophic uh or impactful the climate changes were or environmental changes to the crop yeah, to actually uh, to counter all of that, for example, tequila has, has actually come up with a specific process. So the plants are blue agave. Mm-hmm. Um, if you actually get a tequila, it, the bottle will say it if it's 100% uh, agave. Mm-hmm. It may not say blue, but so for it to be tequila, <coughs> it has to Pedro, be blue. Pedro, <coughs> a blue agave plant, right? Mm-hmm. It's grown, I'm ready to harvest. What do I do to make tequila at a high level? Um, sure. So um, the the jimadores, the people that actually cut mm-hmm. the the piñas, um, they will they, they're experts in this, right? They know. I mean, that's a four year uh, sure window that you actually have to harvest a plant. So normally, so just seed to harvest is four years. It's eight. It's I'm sorry, it's eight years, but it's a four-year window because it could be eight years to 12 years Mm -hmm. where they harvest the plant. It has to be just before it flowers. The the flower stalk is about um, eight to 10 feet. So that's longer than cigars because cigar seed to plant is Is about, well, should be three to five. From seed to plant? You sure about that? That That might even be a little shorter than that. From seed to cigar, I know it can be. Seed Seed to plant. Seed to plant is, I think, a little less than... A little less. Yeah. Of a season. A little, little less, because then they have to cure it, they have to ferment, and mm-hmm. they have to age it, which adds on to the process. I think seed to cigar is more like, you're saying, maybe five, four years plus, yep. right? But what you're saying in the... Seed to, uh, seed to harvest is eight minimum. 
Wow. Up to 12 years. <clears throat> so I got to plant a seed and then went eight years before I can do anything with yes, it. Yes, and that's actually why we took so long in getting here. <laughs> 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 We're just waiting for that to harvest. Okay, so, so now <coughs> I'm harvesting. So you're harvesting <laughs> these piñas. They're between 50 and 120 pounds. Now, is it, is it the roots or is it the plant? It's actually the base of the plants. It's actually, uh, if you can imagine, a ball hidden in large spikes that will mm -hmm. actually kill you if you actually get close to it. Mm -hmm. That's an agave plant. They cut off all the leaves. It ends up with a pretty much round product, um, 50 to 80 pounds, wow. uh, just about. They um, bring it to an, uh, to an oven. Mm -hmm. They roast it at about 800 degrees. The ball as is. They the ball as is. They're not cutting it or the anything. Ball the ball as is. is. Okay. And then they actually have different processes. Some mm -hmm. of them use uh, metal to grind it. Mm -hmm. some, of them, some of them use stone, mm -hmm. uh, stone wheels. Yeah. Um, that produces a very <coughs> different product, hmm. much more um, intense to mm -hmm. make. Um, it creates less consistency, but that makes it more a little bit more exciting. And um, and then they uh, ferment this juice. Um, historically, so ferment like they would wine or beer. Yes, essentially. So okay. historically, uh, there was a whitish <coughs> drink called pulque, mm -hmm. and pulque is to um, Pulque is to whiskey what tequila, uh, pulque is to beer what tequila is to whiskey. So it's a much more distilled, refined, um, intense product. And um, pulque has about 5% um, uh, alcohol in it. So, so it's, it's like, like a, a beer. It's like a tequila. Yeah, it's a beer it's from a beer. the agave plant. Yes. Yeah, I gotcha. And, That's pretty um, cool. I've so never had that before. Is it, it any good? This, it's actually, I never had it. Mm. Um, I've seen it. They <clears> actually <throat> have pulquerias in Mexico. And um, it's actually uh, holes in the wall. So on vacation, you may be a little bit leery about just trying something Going that the far street. out to, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. That, and that is a little beyond. But um, it's a softer drink. It's actually cheap. Mm -hmm. to produce um it's not bottled it's just fermented um in some cases just for a few days mm -hmm. and if you take that and you um refine it a lot more you end up with um a sugar-based liquid um which is actually what the chips uh contain and uh you let that ferment at the oh, end so that's where they get the agave sugar from yes is that Precisely. right after ferment hmm. fermentation process yep. they're making a sugar from it yes Right, I see. And then to make the beer, I assume they would add yeast to it to to make that to, yes to make the beer. Yeah, precursor. Then if you're going to make tequila, though, you're going to take that result from fermentation and distill it, boil it, and distill it. Gotcha. Yes. So you end up with something that um, after fermentation is higher than the 55 percent allotted alcohol. Mm -hmm. So you actually have to reduce it with water. Yep. And you end up with tequila blanco. Mm -hmm. That's immediately bottled. Um, right, the clear is because after you distill something, it's clear. You're adding some water to bring down the alcohol level. Yep. Put it in a bottle, and that's your silver. That's your silver yep. or blanco. Mm -hmm. uh, the names can only be blanco silver. Um, they, if you actually, there's a second class after that. That it's actually called joven, which means young. Mm -hmm. It's actually um, extremely good. For example, Casa, Casa de Dragones, um, Dragons, has a uh, Blanco that is excellent. It's about $200 per bottle. Wow. Uh, but it's a mix of Añejos and recently made tequila. Now, uh, Añejos are put in a, a barrel for aging, correct? It is. in. Um, you actually have Blanco, mm -hmm. Joven, which is a mix. Um, then you have Rested, Reposado. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is um, about no more than a year, usually. In a barrel? Uh, not necessarily. Mm, interesting. The, the barrel is only for the añejos and the extra añejos. And then barrels it, are flavored? So the, the, It is very specific barrels. Um, it is oak barrels, mm -hmm. uh, two types of oak only. And the, bottle has to be, the barrel has to be no more than... 600 liters so about 150 gallons a little bit more than that um it, as i said very controlled mm. and um then they have to be you can actually ship the barrel elsewhere for uh bottling i gotcha but, but now where do be, they get the barrels from they make barrels for they make they process. make the barrels okay. um one of my other favorite tequilas is called corazon corazon has a um 
a special line. It's called Expressions of the Heart. And they actually use um, um, Buffalo Trace. Yeah, the bourbon barrels. The bourbon barrels. That's they because use... we learned that FDA in the United States says you can only use your barrels for so long in the uh, aging process until you have to get rid of them yep. and get new barrels. So there's this whole market that's emerged. They use them in the cigar industry. They use them in the tequila industry yep. now. In the whiskey so they're, industry. And they're they're yeah. selling them to basically yeah. other countries where they can use them outside of the regulations. So there's no regulation that says that you have to use the barrel for a specific amount of time. Mm -hmm. But obviously, as you can imagine, those tannings and everything else that that, that barrel has eventually just wear out. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, if there's only so much flavor you're going to get from yep. a barrel at a certain time. And then I'm sure there's also like bacteria kind of concerns or whatever after a barrel's been used well, for so long. And that much alcohol. Yeah, and that much alcohol, <laughs> probably not an issue. I don't know what the FDA was thinking making that regulation, but right. we all have our thoughts on the FDA. <clears throat> Most of us in the cigar industry now. Let's do away with it. <laughs> How long does it sit in the barrel for? So the, um, the Hoven, uh, the... Oh, wait. The so Hoven is yeah, a mix. Resposado. You Reposado. said they, they use... Um, they put it in a barrel for a year? For up to a year. Some people may let it lie longer. There's sure. no limitations as to how long it can actually sit in a barrel. Okay. But the Añejo, which is the next one mm -hmm. up after that, um, is no, it's about um, no more than three years. So it depends. So the, the plant to liquid, uh, to, to drinkable liquid, is relatively long, but then the process after that is relatively short. I was going to say, now we're talking 11 years for an Añejo, right? right? Yeah, okay. And then um, the Extra Añejo, which is a relatively new quality in the last 15 years, um, it's actually uh, minimum three in the same size barrel. So um, that is very, the, the minimum time and size are by law um, set in, in Mexico. Mm -hmm. After that, there is about, um, as I said, th about 1,200, 1,300 uh, uh, places that will actually bottle it. And there is about 300 tequilas that are uh, made in Mexico, but they're bottled elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So the, the way that you know that it's actually full tequila, it's actually the NOM, the uh, nomination, uh, Normas Oficiales Mexicanas. Del Consejo Regulador de Tequila. Uh, so NOM CRT, and there's a specific number. So you'll know who will actually, who actually made this. Mm. So Aviones, for example, um, has about 14 brands that they actually market under. Mm -hmm. um, as you can imagine, some of, the, some of the brands are outstanding, and some of them are not necessarily good. So what will probably happen is not all <coughs> the agaves make it, to the highest quality. So those will actually get made into the best tequila. Is the, the name tequila kind of uh, regulated much like bourbon is? Like if it says bourbon, it has to come from Kentucky. If there it says tequila, does it have to come from the Mexico blue agave plant? There is 14 types of liquor around the world, like uh, cognac, yep. bourbon, champagne, uh, champagne yep. tequila, pisco. Mm -hmm. uh, there's three actually in the uh, Americas. Mm -hmm. um, I believe bourbon, bourbon one, is yeah. one of them. Uh, tequila is the second. And the third one is from South America. It's like a grappa. It's called yep. pisco. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had grappa before, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, it's mm -hmm. just like it. Very strong. It's from Peru. Uh, so those three, um, those three liquors are the American, so to speak, liquors that are regulated. Yep. It has to be made from blue agave. Um, it has to be 51% or, or more. Uh, blue agave. Mm -hmm. After that, you can actually mix it and still call it tequila. Interesting. Um, yeah, what so, are they? Because I've seen the 100% agave and then not. What else are they mixing it with if it's not 100% agave? It's your guess is as good as mine. It can be any anything to change the color, anything mm -hmm. to change the alcohol content, anything to change the consistency. It could be anything from gum mm -hmm. um, to grain. And the great thing about 100% agave is that um, it is gluten-free, mm -hmm. so you know what you're getting. Um, anything else, you could actually get, uh, for example, a bad hangover. For a little while, they sure. are... Sure, yeah, because they might be putting additional sugars in, which also which frees hangovers. who knows what they are. Mm -hmm. um, and some people, as we, for some reason, uh, as of late, we have a lot of people that are gluten 
uh, intolerant. Yeah, sure. So 100% agave is 100% gluten free. So they can drink as much tequila as until they pass out. Absolutely. <laughs> and actually, um, uh, there is a couple of studies that have came out recently that tequila is actually, uh, it's the sugars in the tequila don't react with the body the same way as regular sugars. Interesting. So they give you the flavor, but they pass through. So they don't get processed. I think so it doesn't stick around and make yeah. you fat is I, what is going to be my exactly. drink. Yeah, that's exactly. an idea. Yeah. Um, we should just drink, drink more tequila. tequila. And lose yeah. weight? Is that what <laughs> it's apparently so. Um, and actually, when you apply pressure to it, um, the University of Mexico was able to make diamonds with it. Interesting. Yes. Out of the brute? Um, no, out of uh, tequila itself. Wow. Out of the end product. So mm. that's another experiment. Pedro, when you said they <coughs> harvest the, the, the root ball, right? And you said it was 60 pounds or something, roughly? Just about. Um, how many bottles does that equate to? I am not 100% sure, but it depends on the water content of the actual uh, mm -hmm. plant at the end. Um, it, it's, it varies. And uh, it also varies per year. So you can imagine over 12 years, over 12 different cycles, um, even though it's a relative desert, you, can, you actually end up with a very different product, depending on what else, how you water it, um, how you, uh, you know, all of the environmental factors. So there is no, uh, there's no set number. Um, so it, it, it varies. I'm sure the water matters too, right? Absolutely. Um, in that area, is, is relatively dry. Um, and Well, I mean, uh, the water they put in after they distill it, right? They, or, not necessarily. Okay. Not necessarily. I mean... You, I, I was told not to drink the water if I go to Mexico, though. <laughs> that, is, that is actually, in some places, absolutely don't. Um, and it's not necessarily the bacteria or anything else like that. They still chlorinate their water and all of that. Um, it's actually the mineral content mm -hmm. that, that will alter you. Um, your system mm -hmm. and make you very, very unhappy. Hmm. So Interesting. I don't know how you guys are doing over there, but we have switched um, to... Yeah. Oh, uh, yes, yeah, sorry. We, I we have I, switched I to... <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Catching up. Why'd you put the bottles over there? That's dangerous. <laughs> well, I mean, we're actually, uh, we're having our conversation over here. You know, we're communicating with tequila. And, yeah. Um, this, this actual bottle that we switched to, it's, it's a beautiful uh, bottle. Lay, uh, lay in... Legenda del Milagro. Mm. Um, so I'm glad you can pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're actually uh, we're gonna go switch to old Spanish show, um, as the security podcast did some years ago. A lot, ago. many in the industry would probably uh, be able to keep up. So it's actually uh, this, this. Are you bottle, from Mexico? Is that your is that your heritage, Pedro? Um, I could be. Um, you it haven't done ancestry.com yet. <laughs> it, it it depends on the time of the year. I'm actually originally from Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, but I've actually vacationed in Mexico many times. Mm -hmm. I've crossed the border on foot as well, uh, just for fun and was allowed to come back. You weren't um, put in the cage? Uh, I was not put in the cage. I actually, uh, they said, if, if you exceed this height, you yeah. may go through. Okay. <laughs> so I was not, I was not kept in a cage. Yeah. We should probably move on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're going to go to hell for that joke. <laughs> so um, this is actually uh, yeah, a so little bit higher this? end. You said something in Spanish. Legenda del Milagro. <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> the legend of the miracle. Um, the I legend like that. Yes. of so the miracle. Wow. We started I with like the planes. That's like, I, I, I want, I'm gonna, am I going to see unicorns once I drink this? <laughs> it depends how much you drink. I love you, man. <laughs> It depends. At the end of the show, we're all going to hug, I guess. It okay. depends how much we drink. That's when we get to the 1942. Yeah, hugging at a minimum. Oh, yes. I, I was referencing a ridiculous movie where Neil uh, Patrick Harris was tripping on mushrooms and sees himself riding <laughs> a unicorn and says, I love you. Is there any movie with Neil Patrick Harris that he is not doing some sort of ridiculous role? Yeah, well, like he's not, he plays himself in the Harold and Kumar movies, dude. Like, how, how awesome is that uh, to get a job as an actor to be like, yeah, we want to want you come to this movie, but you're just gonna play yourself. Like, <laughs> sweet. <laughs> there's there's very few actors that get to do that. For example, uh, Jack Nicholson plays himself yeah. in all the movies. Stan Lee. I um, mean, Stan Lee. Yeah. Right. Yes, yeah. he plays the grandpa. Um, and uh, Malkovich. You actually Malkovich's head mm -hmm. is featured in the movie. In any case, so what, this is the unicorn tequila. This is the, yes. <laughs> what did you so call it? Legends in Miracles. Legends of the Miracles. Legends of, of the, the Miracles. So we started with the planes. It's epic. I want someone to reference me as that. <laughs> That's like an ambition. And here's Aaron. He is 
the legend of the miracle. There's actually the, the laws for uh, making and bottling tequila are available for free. So you can actually have your own tequila made after yourself. Yes. Oh, but so I, do it. That's on my bucket list. Can I make it with seaweed? <laughs> I, I sort of um, find a rejuvenation effect with seaweed recently, and maybe I could make a, a seaweed tequila. Tell you what, if you actually, um, if, if, if I get invited back after uh, what's going to happen here at the end of the show and, <laughs> or during the show, I will make a sangrita with seaweed and name it after you. Can we put vodka in it? <laughs> <laughs> and salt and lime. <laughs> uh, Tito's. Tito's tequila. I mean, Tito's vodka. Yes. So that's close enough to Mexico, Is right? Because this, this <clears throat> orange juice and tomato juice, I mean, just hold on. First off the bat, orange juice goes with vodka. Well, there's a few things that don't go with vodka. But yes. specifically, orange juice goes very well with vodka. Tomato juice goes very well with vodka. Mint it, doesn't go very good with vodka. Mint does not. But you said there's lime in here? Orange juice? Uh, there is lime. And some hot sauce? Lime, hot sauce. I mean, sauce. That's, that's just like a bloody mint. This like is a, lovely. This yeah. is really nice. Yes. I could have yes. this for breakfast is there? Day. Can we make another round of these with vodka? <laughs> we will do after the show. Yes. We, we do have... Actually, let's shoot another show. But we'll just keep recording. And I got very excited there. When you say, <laughs> let's shoot, I thought another shot. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> so this one is about the same color. As the previous one. Um, is that a tiny bit darker? Is that maybe so. Maybe so. Um, and uh, But to oh, me, it's a little bit... better than the first one. Smoother. Yes. Yeah. It's smokier. Holy crap. A lot more yeah, taste. this is really A good. lot more taste. Yeah. 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 So we were discussing how to start... So you're going to come back every week, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> the Tequila and Scar show? Or is it the Scar um, and Tequila show? Well, I pick one. It's yeah. Fine, <laughs> we can interchange it every week. <laughs> <laughs> so as of, as of now, I'm on a, um, I've done about all of the tequilas that I can get in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So I moved on to rums. Oh. Mm. I love rum. Dark <laughs> rum. So. But, now, all rum. <laughs> but it's an interesting point. <clears throat> when I drink the, these higher-end tequilas that are not the ones you do with the salt and lime and end up passed out naked on the front lawn, right? I mean, you definitely still could uh, end up naked on the yes, front lawn. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. But... The difference between drinking this sipping tequila and a bourbon or a whiskey or a scotch is a very different experience. I would say the first thing that strikes me is how much lighter the tequila is. It's not as heavy and syrupy. Correct. And you hit flavor first rather than alcohol? Yes. And yes. There's, but there's still a lot of flavor to it without that syrupy kind of component you get with a bourbon whiskey or scotch yes or, or rum i mean rum is very sure i wouldn't it can be syrupy but it's also very sugary and sweet uh as well yes this this they're actually um the the lighter the tequila the younger the tequila the more floral it mm -hmm. is typically um if it's highland tequila is it's a lot uh it fills your mouth with um with flowers it, it's a lily it's a lily plant um, it's like unicorns and uh, yes it's magic like it's like your drinking your, in a unicorns Miracles. and magic um <laughs> absolutely can't believe this is part of my job it it, it, <laughs> it is your job so <laughs> it's, it, it's if you remember I, I don't know how much you know about the uh, the history of uh of uh, champagne right it was monks <clears throat> that actually drank it and it was like sipping a bit of heaven uh when they when they try champagne certain ones i can see that yep yep and tequila is kind of like drinking the the, the flowers the, of the mm -hmm. earth, the product of the earth, right? So Nectar. it's 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 a it's a party drink as as most people associate. Yeah, it, it got a bad. Re I feel like we should address that yeah. issue. It got a bad yeah, reputation. Really bad rep. And we've when we've done tequila segments on the show in the past, we've addressed this issue that most people view tequila as they go by a handle of Jose Cuervo and everyone's doing shots at the party. Uh, with the salt and the lime kind of thing. Well, if, if you think of the introduction of tequila into the United States, right, um, uh, Jose Cuervo was the first um, company that sponsored volleyball, professional mm -hmm. volleyball in <coughs> the like United the States. They're like the Budweiser of tequilas. Precisely. I, I, look, I mean, say what you will about Budweiser, like they're still in business today. Sure, yep. they got bought out. On a hot summer day, it's, it's, it's great. I mean, you know what you're getting, right? And right. I think that the crowning achievement and say what you will if you're snobbish about a Budweiser or a Jose Cuervo the crowning achievement 
which we touched on earlier, was the volume they're able to produce at the same level of consistency. And we talked about how consistency is very difficult in cigars. You got to give the larger companies credit. When you have a Budweiser, you have a Jose Cuervo, it's the same drink mm-hmm. every time. That's really hard to do. And now you would question Budweiser because they put rice in it. But anyway, it's still consistent. Well, tequila could have rice in it. Remember earlier that we discussed what how it con- can contain grains? Mm-hmm. Um, so again, if it's not 100% agave, it could contain rice. Gotcha, sure. Um, and Jose Cuervo itself, uh, they, oh, they produce about 20% of the tequila that is consumed in the world. Wow. Wow. So talk about consistency. Their farms must be massive. Absolutely. Absolutely, they are. And uh, um, it's they actually produce, uh, for example, 1800. Uh, mm-hmm. It used to be Cuervo 1800. Yeah, they, I used to like 1800. I was it, like, it's wow, actually, I think I've had that. I've that's had so that. much better than the regular big handle yeah. of Jose Cuervo. It and is. I used to use that in my margaritas ah, you're posh. because it was, it, it was, it just tasted so much better. And I didn't get like a headache or a, uh, as much of a hangover the next day. So Jose Cuervo Gold um, is actually a blend. Mm-hmm. Um, it is 51% agave, so blue agave, uh, but the rest could be anything else. Right. Um, you may get a year that is, you know, much higher in, in blue agave, or you may actually get a year that is just 51%. Interesting. And, uh, but the, the flavor still, the, the experience is still very much the same. Yeah, it's a, it's a blended, yeah. it's, and you can control blended, it with right. sugars and all of that, so you're free to do whatever. Much like I talk about cigars, you can adjust the, the yep. ratio and still be so close that when you know college students are shooting it yeah, <laughs> nobody, bar, they're, yeah, nobody cares. Yeah, like, yeah. they're not like oh that jose cuervo tastes different from the jose cuervo from my junior year right, right. like no it, yeah right i got you and it, i mean as and as you're drinking these today you'll see that that you're not necessarily um you're not driven to um you gotta eat something right you gotta get that flavor out of your mouth it's yeah, actually yeah. a full experience yeah uh, very consistent. Uh, we moved on to a second bottle that is better than the first one. Um, so by the time we actually get to the third one, um, you'll see that uh, there's no reason to put any ice. There's no reason to... Which is good if you're visiting other countries. You can sip tequila, not have any ice or, or water. Yeah. <laughs> you're not supposed to be drinking that stuff. Yeah. Sometimes the ice Absolutely. is bad, isn't it? Sometimes the ice is the... Uh, I think when it was Will that went to Cuba and others I've talked to went to Cuba... We're trying to find drinks that didn't have ice for the reasons that Pedro was mentioning. I didn't realize it was not water. bacteria, that it was it's minerals. not necessarily bacteria. It could be bacteria, yeah. but not be, necessarily. Yeah. I mean, you can get from a badly washed glass. Sure. Right? Some of these places just yeah. rinse in dirty water. Right. And then here right. you go. Here you go. Um, so Hopefully the tequila or kills whatever's in there. <laughs> absolutely. But, I mean, you could get enough in there to make it an unpleasant ex- experience. Mm-hmm. Sure. So, but... Um, we, as, as I said, we actually, we moved on this, this process of tasting these things. And for example, this one, I wouldn't drink with orange, right? Or cinnamon. Yeah, I, I find I don't need the cinnamon no, or the orange at all with this at one. All. Yeah. So how, I how still have it? some cinnamon as a backup on my hand too, in case Just I need in case. it later. Yes. <laughs> um, and there's actually some in the ashtray as well. How is that? <laughs> I did how, that happen. I how is this around. one, um, how is this one treating the, the cigar? I, I know that as oh, I go a, down. It's a miracle? legendary magical Miracle. miracle in heaven <laughs> in heaven <laughs> it's it no it's it's amazing it and it, i it guess goes. we're here to talk about the pairings and the matchings mm. of the cigar to the tequila and both of them it's amazing thank it, you, it thank just, you for I, me even up. the we struggle to come up with pairings for bloody marys but even the non-alcoholic drink that has tomato juice and orange juice and lime and hot sauce mm-hmm really complements everything that we're doing today. Mm-hmm. And Joe loves a Bloody Mary. Oh, um, I, I can list like seven cigars that I pair with Bloody Marys on wow. a weekly basis. I love that's them. seven episodes that we can do. No, that's just Joe and I's Friday morning. That's just oh, about seven <laughs> yeah, Bloody yeah. Marys. Paul's I like, Bloody Mary. I'm love. like, you're the boss, boss. If you say it's love, time, it's time. Whenever you say Bloody it's Bloody time. Bloody Marys. <laughs> and, I, and I tell you, is there a cocktail that, uh, I mean, seriously, this non-alcoholic drink could be a, a totally awesome breakfast yeah. cocktail. It, it, it can actually be. You can actually make your own Mexican Bloody Mary. Uh, and put tequila in Bloody it? Bloody Maria, yes. Yeah. Put tequila in it. Yeah. Yes. We, we actually do um, this next door. With orange we, juice we, and we, lime yeah. and hot sauce. I'm wow. in. I'm in. No, we actually um, oh, you would, yeah, upgraded yeah. the menu next door. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. We, we like, uh, I'm going to do Bloody Mary, but he throws some mezcal in there instead. And they're like, are you serious? And we're like, oh, yeah. 
and and you put the mezcal and they do the orange juice separate uh like with it so they'll do the regular bloody mary mix a little bit of tomato and juice and i'm sorry lime, the difference between yeah. tequila and mezcal was what specifically it's, again it could there is other plants that are not that are agaves but they're but not, not the blue, blue agave correct i gotcha so then you take that plant you roast it uh, longer mm -hmm. and it's a richer flavor out of the gate um, interesting so it's like a different strain of the agave plant correct. that's not blue agave in cigars that translates because there's multiple different strains of tobacco that yep. we use for cigars however there's a completely different strain of the plant that's used for cigarette tobacco yes that not a lot of people know that there's a, a difference uh, and that's kind of what I liken it to is it just different strains. It it absolutely it is. And and it's um it's different regions. Mm -hmm. Still uh controlled but not as tightly. Right. Um it has to be harvested and distilled and barreled in Mexico. Right. Um it can be bottled elsewhere. Is the growing process for Mezcal pretty it's similar? It's very similar as okay. well. You just you allow the plant to grow um and you harvest it just before it flowers. Mm -hmm. And then you roast it, you grind it. So the process is very similar. Um, not as controlled. There's not as many rules. Okay. I like mm. not many rules. I right? Like That's the hacker mentality. Yeah, right? yeah, like yeah. Throw the rules out the window. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and let's but, start from the But the side. hacker mentality is to actually get something out there. Sure. Rarely do you see someone that is willing to wait eight years to see the first product. Right. You typically effort. hack the process to shortcut it. But right. even with Mezcal, they're not doing that. It's still... It's still very long. I didn't know that it took eight years. That's pretty amazing. Mm. Yeah. Actually. Minimum. I have a uh, question. You yeah. you had mentioned in the beginning of this, which kind of triggered my memory, and I'm wondering if this is going down like another path. Mm -hmm. You had mentioned in the process after they get the ball, yes. Um, there are two different processes. One is with uh, metal to grind yes. it, and one is with stone. Yes. Is there a way that for a future episode you can do the research? Because I'm almost wondering, right? If you look at like, uh, is the stone you said like the stone is a little bit harder to come by. Yes. Uh, it's done in smaller batches. Yep. The process seems to be on the outskirts in not so good areas and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Is there a way, like I'm wondering like if, is like the stone considered like the boutique version of tequila um, I am versus the mass produced version of tequila? Like I'm almost wondering like is there for, <clears throat> for another episode is like it's like if we can get stone versus – um, well, Joe, how do we know that process? I liken that to some of the um, similarities, different techniques that they used to make cigars. Like when uh, La Aurora came and talked about uh, Manuel Anoa came on, he's the master blender for La Aurora, and talked about their process that they used where they wrap them in palm leaves. Yes, remember yep. the I, and I forget which cigar and what they call the the process. You can go back in the Stewie Geeks history, and that's a great episode to watch because they do a slightly different process. I feel like that's the difference between using the metal grinder and the stone grinder. Yep. So they go through a little extra work to do a, a different process that ultimately has different results. Yep. Yeah. I mean, some of these places are way out there. They don't necessarily have electricity. Mm. So wow. the stone is actually the so way to go. So it's foot or whatever? It, no, it's, it's a big stone. Oh, okay. Right? So you have uh, probably a donkey just riding oh. around, yeah. uh, put, grinding the, the piñas, and the type of um, wood that they actually use will actually alter the final product as well. Mm -hmm. So oh, wait, hold on. Explain the donkey <laughs> and the wood. And well, the, the stone. donkey's the power because there's no. It's the power. So what, what's the the donkey's like spinning yeah, in a, a circle. wheel? So it's like a big flat stone, and then a round yeah, stone, and then it's a and big flat stone, yeah. like flower, and then another wheel. I yes, guess. just like flour. So wow, that's pretty I cool. I wouldn't yeah. put it. I mean, and, and you actually um. The process is not legally controlled to that point where you actually, you can see the bottle, you know, f you know, the plant from seed to harvesting mm -hmm. and then the product from now until six months later until it's somewhat aged. Um, I, I wouldn't say that I'll be willing to bet my, my career or reputation on the fact that this thing was stoned today mm. and that it's going to be bottled and it's the same thing because they can, they can actually blend it uh, along the way. Uh, but it's, there are some houses that say this is, you know, this is an artisan's product mm. and we're willing to you know, stand by the quality of what it is. Um, I'm not really sure that... Um, some of those products can be obtained here because of the higher pricing. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, I mean, down there, it's usually on the average, tequila costs about half of what it costs here. Hmm. Um, for example, one of the bottles that you see uh, common is uh, Corralejo, which is a blue, beautiful blue bottle. Uh, but you don't see many of the brands here. Uh, the tequila here is Patron. That's the go-to tequila or mm-hmm. Jose. And um, the tequila down there is Don Julio, which actually we're going to get into that in a few minutes. Mm. I'm so um, excited. That's the... Yeah, that's... The I've, actually, <laughs> I've actually got quite a fun sort of fact that brings me back as to As long as it's not a story, Aaron. <laughs> it, it, it is a story, but I'll give the abridged version PG and give 13, it very PG quick. PG-13. PG-13. <laughs> um, so you were talking about the beer, and what was the name for Pulque. the beer? So in the UK, we have something similar, but it's mass-produced and it's very commercial, and it's called Desperados, and I've had many a hangover of that because it's, it's sort of, I don't believe it's made in Mexico, and I don't know where they get the extract from, <laughs> but this thing tastes very good. And a friend of it's mine... tequila? It's got te- some sort of tequila in it, so it's tequila beer. Mm-hmm. And a friend of mine, Blake Sanders, um, he um, has a band called the Desperados, and they're like a blues rock band. And they're actually called the Desperados because when he started the band, and he's the front man of the band, they got paid in Desperados. And the reason they got paid in Desperados was because that was the most expensive beer in the bar, and they could drink them for free all night, and mm. they didn't get any payment. And he's actually got music on Spotify, and one of the songs is Salt, Tequila, and Lime. I don't know if the sort of viewers or listeners would like to check it out, but it's on Spotify, and it's sort of um, what we're talking about. It just came into my head that that's what Blake Band called Desperados, and it came from drinking Desperados, and it, 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 I just thought it was... There's it's a beer that has tequila in it. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. It's, let it be known that it's not tequila, which is actually malt. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's so much material in this show just for seven or eight more. Mm. Yeah, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So I'm actually, uh, I don't know. You look at, like you're empty. Um, you look I like you're I can be empty. Um, Let's drink more tequila and call it work. Um, it <laughs> is. It is. That's what I'm saying. So Are we going to do more of the same or, or is this a no, different? No, 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 no. This no. is uh, Don Julio, right? No, 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 no. Oh. no. And, and as you can see, the, um, the, the, none of these have been the same, so no. Did you bring cheeseburgers too? Because I could use one right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I had a good McRib earlier. Could we have McRib? That was not a McRib. <laughs> that was not a McRib. That was, that was like an imitation. I'm like, Aaron, is that a McRib? He's like, no, it's a rib sandwich I got from Cumberland Farms. I'm like, dude, you are experiencing some of the not-so-finest American cuisine. <laughs> while you're here I can't live off steak and shrimp and lobster every night it's like sometimes you want a steak sometimes you want a McRib <laughs> awesome. and sometimes yeah. you don't <laughs> I should just keep quiet and eat some more chips yeah the chips are hey, fantastic wait, 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 by the way chips, them, them chips here. are great yeah. let's yes. lift up your microphone oh. <laughs> so what are we drinking now um, so I, I, I feel like Joe here, uh, for a second, because this is, uh, Don Julio 1942. This is not their top of the line. This is second in the, um, uh, chain of best, command. Yeah. In the chain of command. <laughs> um, I'm not really sure what the 1942, uh, applies to. Um, I'm hoping that it's a year. Yeah. Um, Don Julio is actually, um. We went from a house that produces about, you know, 15, 30 products to a house that produces a little bit less to a house that only produces two uh, tequilas. Um, Don Julio is the, is the go-to brand down in Mexico. Um, you can't, um, we were speaking earlier about Walmart, which is yeah. actually the, uh, the, uh, the place to get tequilas. Uh, in, Mexico, in Mexico, when I was in Mexico. It is, it is the strangest thing, but the, that's where a lot of people get them. And um, that's another episode. <laughs> yeah. Wait, do you have more of this Sangarita stuff? Um, actually, we do. Is it's up there? Actually, why don't you have mine? I've barely touched it. Okay. I'll so do that. Right. Um, I have so much tequila in me that. that well, for the second problem. segment, we'll 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 take a quick break and do yeah. that. We may Are we not do more tequila more. in the second segment. Well, we're just gonna burn through a few stogies of the week. Oh, but Lord, you know. is there a nap time meeting scheduled after this? <laughs> 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 Like I say, you're the boss, boss, whatever you decide. Have you bought that hammock yet of Amazon? Because <laughs> I feel we need to use we it to today. Uh, so this is, you know, they're, they, they're more, much more focused. 
um, there is less um, there is less leeway in the process. Here in the United States, you get the Don Julio Reposado and the Añejo. Um, this is the 1942, which is the next one up. Mm -hmm. There's a Don Julio Real, which is a much more uh, elaborate bottle. Um, there's a lot of pride in uh, the execution of tequila. For example, Patron itself, uh, Patron has about 30 hands, uh, 30 pairs of hands that touch a bottle of Patron before it leaves the factory. Um, and uh, Porfidio, for example, um, all of the bottles are hand blown. Thank you. The um, So I'm sorry, Peter. What <clears throat> my question is: What's different about Patron and some of the other manufacturers? Because I think Americans have started to classify tequila as I take a shot at the bar with the salt and the lime. To if I want something better, I know there's Patron, and I'll use that in my my margaritas if I want to get you know kind of fancy and make a homemade margarita. So what what is Patron doing differently? Marketing. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's actually, so I'll ask you a question, um, or actually uh, both of you. I, I know you a little bit better. So do you prefer vodka or scotch? Um, I probably prefer vodka, to be honest. So, and you? Vodka. Okay. So you would probably enjoy uh, Patron Añejo. Mm -hmm. It's, it's harsh, harsher. Um, it, is, it is actually, um, as it hits your mouth, uh, it fills it more, and right. um, it, it's it's very good. It actually has a um, similar process as all of these, um, but it's actually the marketing. It's actually when you drink it, uh, and none of you has have, have actually had a sip of this and just grimaced, right? They're all very smooth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, patron. The first um, one, I, admittedly, I took too big of a sip. That's different. <laughs> I think you finished it. I did, I did, well, no, but the first sip I took, I, it was just a, a huge gulp, and that's why if you if you go back to the video and watch that, it's pretty hilarious actually, because I was like, oh my god. Yeah, it's. I, I took too much of a sip. Yeah, it, it was actually it's out of all these three, which are all three are añejos. Mm -hmm. Um, so they're minimum. Um, they're, they're up to three years. They could be more. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it's. It, they're smoother drinks than the actual pat Patron. Patron will actually just... You know you're drinking Patron. It's like a lower-end Añejo for Patron. It, it's... Or it's just different. Yes, it's just different. Um, in now, whiskey, their silver is very good. Uh, I just want to talk about margaritas for a second because yep. that's obviously the alcoholic ingredient uh, is tequila. I like using Patron silver in my margaritas. Now, I don't use an off-the-shelf mix, right? You take... The tequila, which I haven't made these in a long time, uh, lime, lime juice, a little simple syrup, sugar, run it, run it through a shaker, yeah, and then and strain it into a chilled glass. Yes, did and I miss any ingredients? Yes, lime. you did. Lime. You're missing one more. What did I miss? Oh, uh, Grand Marnier. Yes. 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 Some sort of orange flavored liquor. Uh -huh. Orange flavored liquor. I put over the top. I usually don't run through the shaker. So, I want to say this how okay. I used to do that. Yeah, um, I tend to drizzle with the some uh, most or people. Or you can put it in the shaker. I mean, put it way. in. Yeah. Uh, Grand Marnier is great. Um, anything that is orangey, just not it, it, like the ghetto margarita is like the triple sec and the like añejo and then like some off the shelf mix. Right? I didn't want to. I didn't want to. You know, disparage anyone with a ghetto comment, but triple sec, yes, uh, uh, it, I, that's the ghetto I'm margarita. Putting it totally in like the ghetto category, <laughs> right? If you want to make a what I term as a real margarita, right, is that the lime juice, I use Patron Silver, um, and then I'll use Grand Marnier as my orange liqueur. Or yep. what's the other orange liqueur? Cointreau. Cointreau. Cointreau, thank yep. you. Or I'll use Cointreau in there. Or sometimes both. Sometimes I use Cointreau and then drizzle with a little Grand Marnier. Yep. Uh, and a little bit of sugar syrup. Yes, absolutely. And preferably not even an off-the-shelf sugar syrup. Like I'll make my own sugar syrup, whether I'm cutting... Yep. An already syrupy liquid, such as maple syrup or oh, wow. something else with water, right? right? That's how I make my old fashions, right? I will have a sugar syrup for margaritas. Now, we haven't had those in our house in a, house in a while, but that's how I 
I would make. That's the first one. You make the first one that way. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> then after that, you're like, I think yeah, I got some mix. More tequila. Let's pour it over more ice tequila. In the blender, right? Yeah, it's like, you know. Extra yeah, Patron's yeah. gone. Just, anybody got the, the blender. Yeah. Anybody it's got like the tequila we two got fingers. on holiday? Yeah. Two ounces, and that's the way it goes, and nothing else. I, I mean, maybe you should do a whole show on mixers and pairings. Uh, but for We've example, some, some cocktail uh, kind of pairings. Yeah. Margaritas are. Even if you make them what I deem as the right way, the non-ghetto way, right? It, they're still tough to pair with cigars as lime-based drinks. Any drink you're adding lime into is tough to pair with a cigar yes. because of the sourness factor. Yes, it's, and that's absolutely why there was no mixings here today. And I was a little bit uh, leery about bringing this you know, acid-based drink. Right. Yeah, but this is it's awesome. We, tomato. We're going to make a whole new Security Weekly cocktail. Tomato and orange. Pedro. <laughs> Be good for the Monday morning meetings, not alcoholic. Yeah, the tomato and orange. I think for the Monday morning meetings, the Tuesday morning meetings, the Wednesday morning, <laughs> Thursday, <laughs> Friday, like it's... Yeah. Just yeah. curious, what happens on Fridays? Just Bloody, Ma Bloody Marys? Uh, no, Bloody Marys are pretty much any time. Depends I mean, on the week. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on the volume. <laughs> Just stop. Um, balls, the pivoting. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Guests have canceled. You know, yeah. you know, we got canceled guests, stoy geek guests that, you know, might not know how to use Skype. Uh. <laughs> so n next week, um, will there be a show? Is it going to happen? No, we're in oh, Vegas next week. They're in Vegas, Vegas next week. Uh, but the following so week, we hold have Hold on. There will be shows at uh, DEF CON in Caesars oh, okay. Palace in Las Vegas, uh, Friday and Saturday. Many, Most of us fly out on Sunday. Um Yep. But Friday and Saturday is DEF CON. We have a reserved a pool cabana at Caesars Palace. Oh. So if you would like, we could share cocktails and Absolutely. cigars on Can Friday I wear a shirt? I mean, this you is, can wear this whatever is not you for want. public. You can wear everything from a Speedo to a three-piece suit or anything in between. I don't know. I can wear Speedo or Mankini, but um, You have to, to wear a three-piece suit, but. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. I might wear my tuxedo. How about a, a jacket with a Speedo? Mm. Oh, that sounds good. It's hot. That that would work in Vegas. Black jacket and a tangerine speedo. Oh, is that your favorite color? No, I'm just saying. <laughs> nah. Taking the conversation back to the question. Please do. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> Save us. So, yeah, sorry. Please. Someone someone has to be mom here, I guess. Um, taking the conversation back to the question you asked Joe and I, and I answered vodka, um, vodka because I don't have a very refined palate to whiskeys and. Every time we talk about whiskey for the last two weeks on the show, I get my Scottish friends sort of WhatsApping me and sort of um, barracking me a bit. And then I get my Irish ones. But if I so was... Wait, where are you from? Is it England, Scotland, or Ireland, dude? I can't tell with Australia? your Australia. I know. Australia, Who, New Zealand? Yeah. Maybe? I don't know. I, I might be getting hell about my accent as well. I think I picked up American tones in it, <laughs> which I'm sure you it's don't get at all. Yeah, especially yeah. when you say Mick Rib. <laughs> <It's my American. laughs> Aaron, where are you from? Um, sort of, um, I was brought up just north of Belfast, so um, I spent my formative years there, and um, I was there till I was 17, so mm -hmm. that's where the accent comes from. Because yeah, it's kind of a mix between Irish and uh, uh, the UK. But yeah. uh, then I moved to England when I was 17, did 23 years in the Royal Air Force, so that meant most of the time was round about England, so... Right. That's maybe where you pick up some English tones there. So if I learned any new words, mostly swear words, I guess, mm -hmm. they probably come out very English. But yeah, I, I'm a bit of a mongrel, to be honest. Sort of, um, I had an English father and an Irish mother. So okay. it was like... Sure. Um, well, so it's a major city, so it's, it's a definitely very a cosmopolitan. It's definitely a mixture of the two. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But um, the, so I said vodka, but if I was to drink a whiskey... I'm not refined enough to drink the really peaty whiskeys. It's like um, Joe took me to a cigar. I don't think that's a, uh, an assessment of your refinement. I think that's a taste. matter of preference and taste. Yeah. And yeah. I think certain people... So what I found while we're talking about pairings and flavor and, and taste and salty, sweet, sour, all those things, right, is that, like, I know Joe and I like Bloody Marys, right? And that is a very specific flavor profile, very salty certainly a, a little bit spicy joe if i made joe a dirty martini for example I, joe would probably dig it right like so i've started to since we've done the stogie geek show start to profile people's palates so joe like you and i could probably you like dirty martinis yes sir see there you go right now if i take someone and i ask them whether or not it doesn't matter the drink i'm like do you like a dirty martini or if i ask them they like a bloody mary if they're no that likely means they lean towards the sweeter uh, profiles mm -hmm. 
Scotch is the same way. Do you like a sweeter whiskey? Yeah. Do you like so. something with a, a a little more complexity to it, like a scotch? Or do you like something that's got a very smoky or peaty profile? People fall into those Yeah, so profiles. I like the ones that have been aged in sherry barrels. Which is sweetness. Yeah, yes. so mm -hmm. I like that. And So, um, Aaron, you probably don't like dirty martinis or Bloody Marys. Well, um, I can have one Bloody, Mar Bloody sure. Mary in yeah. the morning, and it, yep. that's really nice. And that's it. And See, Joe then, and I could just I'm keep done. drinking Bloody Marys yeah. all day long. I, I'd we? be on the mimosas <laughs> yeah. after that. So, sure. Um, yeah. But yeah. yeah. I got gotcha. you. But, so, but that's how I kind of – it, it, it applies to cigars, and it applies to cocktails, and it applies to food, is you start to develop or uh, gain an understanding of how to create or recommend a cocktail or a food correct. dish or yeah, a cigar yeah. to someone based on their palate profile. And there's transference, right? Like – do you like to eat a ton of buffalo wings? No. Yeah, probably probably not, right? Like that puts you not in the spicy, you right. know, category, right? So all of these things relate. Now, in cigars, since we're on the Stogie Geek show, a good tobacconist will know how to talk to someone and derive their kind of yeah. flavor profile. Talk about the food they and like. And it's not just and based on I mean, they will ask what kind of cigars do you like to smoke, but a good tobacconist will ask, will try and determine their flavor profile. Mm -hmm. Like do you prefer the 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 uh, spicy in the salty, or do you prefer like the kind of sweet, maybe with an off balance of sour to it? And I think those are two different profiles. So, you know, it, and it's, you, you can't look down upon someone right. if, they, if their flavor profile for all of these things doesn't fit yours. You, yeah. a, everyone is different. Yeah. It's what I've learned from doing that. I mean, this show for however yeah. many years we've been on the air is really like, you think, well, Paul does a cigar show. So, you know, we talk about cigars. No, a lot of it is about, understanding what people enjoy in terms of the sensations they get on their palate. Mm -hmm. Right. It, yeah, it's, it's not a matter of, of uh, one of them is higher quality than the other. It's just one of them, you know, in, in plain speak, one of them will punch you in the face, right? Um, it, it, since it hits your mouth and then as it goes down, for example, uh, Ka. Ka comes in a skull bottle. It's 110 proof. Um, it is outstanding for 110 proof. 110 proof liquor um it hits your mouth it hits your throat and it just makes you feel happy all over yeah right um, it's that warming sensation right so it, it's it's, it's almost a it's it's almost a better patron than patron okay uh, but it's also you know uh, it, it's it will get you there faster um these are 80 proof um this la this latest one um as you see, it's uh, much sweeter than the other ones. Do you have this? Um, it's the Legend of the Miracle. No, we no, actually we, we we moved on. I'm sorry. This is the, oh, this is the one after that. This Don is Julio. the one after that. This yeah. is 1942. After so many tequilas, I can keep it straight, Pedro. Um, and we actually kept it to three to make it simple. Yeah, because right? anything beyond that, I can't even keep three straight. No, right. but I like the way that you stepped it up. Like, yeah, like, yes. because this each one has a lot its of own flavor. characteristics. This has yeah. got a lot of flavor. This, so this, this one is sweeter. <laughs> this one is this sweeter. Is very dangerous, yes. Because it's going um, down very smooth. Yeah. 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 See, notice you drop the uh, sangrita, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, you finish gone. it with the previous. Yeah, I don't find before. I need the sangrita. Right. Right. I like drinking the sangrita, but I don't feel I need to follow it up with mm -hmm. the first one. I was like, yes, that that definitely helps kind of balance out your palate. Yep. With this last one, you didn't even need it. Yeah. This is which um, means you're hitting the tequila more often than you are the sangrita, which is very dangerous. Correct. Right. So this one, you actually sm you you're drinking caramel. Right. You're yeah. not drinking so much flowers as she's drinking But it's caramel. still not as syrupy as your traditional that it, bourbon whiskey, scotch whiskey, or American whiskey. But normally when I'm drinking, I speed up as I start drinking. But now that we're on this, I've sort of seemed to be slowing down and yes, savoring in it. it. Yeah. And the aftertaste is really nice to feel on the palate, and it's got a really good I think savory is a very good term to describe what you're, you're talking about, Aaron, and we talk about that as uh, one of the taste kind of profiles with cigars, if it's... You know, there's spicy, sweet, salty, sour, and savory is one yeah. of them. Mm. This one has that savory component, yep. whereas Aaron says you would s almost slow down while you're drinking so you can experience all of the flavors yeah. it has to offer. It's really yep. awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So back in this university, divides it into those, yes. and then savory is also... Jose Blanco, when he does his uh, yeah. blending seminars, yeah. uh, it's a very pivotal figure in uh, the cigar industry, and just a great person all around, listens to the show. Hi, Jose. I Hi, hope Jose. you're doing well, my Hi, friend. Jose. Um, we'll break that down in his blending seminars, um, and actually, 
it's kind of interesting. You couldn't do this with spirits, but in cigars, you can put the same fillers, the same binder, and then when you wrap the cigar, you can put different wrappers at different stage mm-hmm. of the yeah, cigar. Yeah, we spoke so the about first half that. is the yeah. first, you know, couple of inches or an inch is one wrapper. The second inch is another wrapper, and that's how Jose has done his seminars in the past. It changes, it changes, but that's one way to do it. And so, as you get into the different wrappers, all of your flavor profiles change. Yeah. With spirits, you have to sample multiple different spirits. There's no way to accomplish that in one particular spirit. Yeah. So, kind of interesting. So, I will say to your, to, I mean, probably to your listeners, this last one. Oh, wait, there's it, people actually watching this yeah, show? I thought I'm, we were I'm just sorry, yes. drinking. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I mean, forgot there's actually people watching and listening. Yeah. <laughs> this, this 1942 is probably what you want to have with... You know, as, as you sit up. <laughs> uh, yeah, Breakfast, so, lunch, and if you look dinner. at and if you look at the damage per bottle or, or the amount consumed, a 1942 is, go, is not going to make the day. So there's food pairings with this as well. There is. There's actually. Uh, oh my uh, god! Uh, this, right, this goes a dinner with tequilas oh. and cigars and okay. food the whole way through. We can actually can we make that, that happen you? in Vegas. You're gonna have to come back. We're gonna have to do a full. It, it's, We've uh, done that once before. There was a, a sponsor at one time. His name was Brian, and he did the – what was the cigar that he did with Phil Zengi? Very nice people. This is Phil's a great guy. He got introduced to – his name was Brian, and he was a cattle rancher in Colorado, one of the Dakotas, Wyoming, something like that, right? And he, he did a, a cigar – well, with Phil, now I can't remember what it's called. We covered it on the show. You can go back and, and listen. But uh, and we had the steak with a particular drink with his cigar, and it it was out of this world. We actually cooked cigars here. Uh, cooked cigars. We cooked steak here in the studio. We didn't cook the cigars. And just cigars. Steak. <laughs> and had those with uh, it, the whole experience was just amazing. Let let me know when we we can actually arrange it. So I think my sort of ambition when we get to Vegas is um, I'm going to try like a, a Kobe Wagyu beef steak. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be the first time I've ever had one. You're going to do that on Saturday night where I just approved the dinner for us, aren't you? It's fine. You can do that. I'm okay with it. Um, as long as I get one too. And we yeah, it yeah. I, I and will. we like cut a piece yeah, and then I'm, put it on a fork and then we intertwine hands. Yeah. And then that sounds beautiful. Look for I want that a picture. picture. That look for that I'm picture not sure on there. social media. Are you, on yeah. Twitter and Are you jealous now, Joe, that <laughs> you're not dude, coming? I, we so can do it. <laughs> well, Joe's not going to be there because yeah. he's, he's going to be a, a dad. A dad. Soon. And that's very exciting. Very yeah, exciting. Yeah. I'm very excited about that. That's more exciting than Waku beef, let me tell you. But Trust at, me, dude. later, <laughs> it is more exciting on year two than year yeah, one. Yeah, I uh, as believe you get me, sleep. We've been coaching. So we're gonna go. For Paul's a been coaching me. He's got three kids, three I boys. I have three boys. Uh, I've been coaching Joe, and I, I, Joe's I, been getting pop, my palms already sweaty. Whenever Paul yeah, talks about if, if you look at Joe now and <laughs> like, look at his luscious Italian hair, <laughs> and then you look at Paul three boys later. <laughs> 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 I, I met Paul with hair. Oh, wow. I've seen photographs. Just, it was uh, the second kid was just born. <laughs> yeah. Besides Rhode Island. Like Dean. <laughs> They're meant yeah. to be the worst. So the are they? It's two, the second right? one. No, have three. <laughs> I go for my it. middle son's Every an time animal Paul too. mentions baby, he is like my palms get sweaty. Like, I'm like, okay, here it comes. It goes more advice. It's making me nervous. But, dude, for like the first six to nine months, like, they yeah. really, I think what we're alluding to, right, is a pedigree of children. Yes, yeah. we have three. Like, they don't. They don't do much for the first yeah. six to nine months. It, it's kind of like disappointing. Like they poop, they eat, <laughs> they throw up, and you change their diaper. They wake yeah. you up, and they sleep a little bit, depending on the mm-hmm. the child, and that varies from from kid to kid. And that's that's pretty much it. Yeah, six to nine months, they start waking up, and <laughs> yes, it, and, and it does get better. I think is the the, the point. Yeah, of those yeah those absolutely. Children. Yeah, absolutely. Wagyu beef tequila pairing, please. Um, when is this dinner? Saturday. Saturday night. Oh. I, I leave uh, Saturday afternoon. Oh, That's oh yeah. So, we, we would totally have you there. Yeah. Yeah. So we can actually scout. I, I can help you scout the place and figure out what so do they have. We're going to, uh, so for much of the cigar industry attends IPCPR, which is held in yep. Las Vegas. Many of you have probably had dinner at the Stratosphere at the restaurant on top of the, the roof. Mm-hmm. I have to tell you that the 
overall experience of a, all the dinners we've ever had, that's probably number two on my list. Just the whole cocktail service and food experience. And correct me if I'm number wrong. Number two. This on my isn't list. a Michelin starred restaurant either, is it? It's just it's the Stratosphere's main restaurant, but it's yeah. not like um like a really extravagant it's Michelin. It's not like a starred. McDonald's McRib. So, totally well, different. I don't know. That McRib was pretty spectacular. We might have to eat a, like an In N Out burger or McDonald's it, one for the night rest of the day. week. <laughs> it's a budget to go to the Stratosphere and our, our, our waiter Joey was just amazing. And I think that's the place where we pair some yeah. tequila with some some like really high end steak. Yeah. Uh, Wagyu is I know is everyone's like oh. I've not had it. Like so you know they, like they rub the cows and they massage. Sake. With, dude, high end steaks are are high end steaks, dude. You're gonna be happy with what they have at a high end mm-hmm. restaurant, and it's gonna fit into the whole experience. I think that's like I don't know, dude. We talk about legends and miracles in, in heaven, like. Being able to enjoy fine spirits with a fine dish of food with a cigar is just an amazing experience. Amazing. You're talking about something. None of these things have any more than three ingredients in it. Right. Right. So once you get once you get too complicated, things just start getting too. It's hard to enjoy. For the most part, cigars are blended to a certain extent, but spirits. Uh, this is just tequila, right? Mm-hmm. And a steak is just, it's the steak. steak. Right. Right. Salt, Salt whiskey, pepper, and yeah. then that's it. Yeah. That's it, right? Like, I don't need any fancy sauce or fancy no, garnishes I don't want or anything, any sauce. right? Like, the, the steak, the tequila, and even to a certain extent, the cigar is premium cigar tobacco. And sure, there might mm-hmm. be different strains in there, but it is premium cigar it's tobacco. It's one plant. Yeah, and it's, it's one plant. And sure, there's different plants they put in there, but it's it's somewhat limited. And there are some cigars that will push the limits of more than six different types of tobacco. Wow. I don't think they're any much better or any much worse than cigars that have a couple of different blends. Now, there have been a lot of, I think, misses in cigars that using a one particular tobacco. So cigars, I think, are kind of the anomaly in that equation in that, uh, you know, your steak is your steak, your spirit is your spirit, your cigar has a little bit of blending going on. It's not a particular Puro, Cuba, although Mm -hmm. certain Cuban cigars that are aged for some time have pretty much the same flavor profile, but are very good. I would say that's the exception to the rule. Cigars that have a few different tobaccos are usually the ones you find that are very good. Cigars that kind of push the envelope and like blend too much. It, I mean, I don't know. It's like a 50-50, Joe. I don't know what so you're, you know, kind what of about the, I'm, I'm, what I'm, I'm agreeing with you. Yeah. Yeah. What about the opposite end of the spectrum then? Because I see this the same as I see single barrel, single malt yeah. whiskey. Yeah. And do you have like the equivalent in a cigar that is wrapped with one leaf and it's the... I, it, to yeah, me, would Cuban, that just not work? Cuban tobaccos are one that just by the nature of the product they produce will be that one type of tobacco. Yeah. And there are different growing regions in Cuba. Sure, but all of the tobacco that you get in a Cuban cigar is 100% Cuban. Mm-hmm. There are cigars that have blended Cuban tobacco with other types of tobacco. And you might think that that's like the panacea. They're good, don't get me wrong. But then when we move outside of Cuba, there have been attempts to blend one particular kind of tobacco from a particular region, whether that be... Honduras, Costa Rica, Nicaragua, Dominican Republic, uh, Brazilian, uh, Arapuraca. Typically, when you move outside of Cuba, there's some, there's some combination. Or if it's a Nicaraguan Puro, they're from totally different regions and different types of tobacco to give you that experience. I'm kind of of the opinion, and even American tobacco, like the Connecticut wrappers, Pennsylvania, to- I'm kind of of the opinion cigars the really good ones incorporate at least a couple of different varieties to, to blend that together. They're typically not a puro from a particular region, unless we're talking about Cuban cigars, which, if they're aged for a particular period of time, do benefit. But again, even in Cuba, they're probably pulling tobacco from different regions. And then we're talking about different primings of the plant, right? So we're talking about the Lajero, Viso, Seco, you know, all of those different primings. Play so into the it different well, ages, so you can use yeah. different well, ages no, of tobacco leaves as well. different primings in the plant 
get different nutrients based on their uh, yeah, position the, from the sun okay. or the shade, mm-hmm. depending on how they're grown, oh, wow. and present different profiles that they're blending with. Um, so there's a lot of different factors. So that this is what interests it. me the most, because I know the last two weeks, Joe spoke a lot about before coming to America, um, I had only smoked Cuban cigars. Like, is this your first time in America? Um, no, it's so... Okay, good, because I didn't want us to be like your first... <laughs> yeah, my first experience of America. It's like, I'm staying. <laughs> but it's like, um, when I come to America... I have always brought Cuban cigars with me. I remember in 1999. What were those Monte Monte Cristos? Number three? Yeah, so I brought you the Monte Cristos. We'll talk about those in the next segment. And I brought you the Romeo and Juliet. You smoked that one? The Churchill. Have you smoked that one? No, I didn't think you'd smoke that one. (laughs) I didn't know you, Joe. You're going to get a care package. (laughs) It was all about Paul. I forgot. No, well, uh, hopefully nobody federals listen, but you might get a care package. So um, (laughs) I might rebrand them. (laughs) I don't know. Well, I'm sure we can sort something out and get a lead or I just have to come back and bring them because yeah. under Obama I could bring as many as I want but I had an experience it's a little different now but not yeah, I anyway. had an experience in 1999 which I didn't realize I was in Kuwait City and um, I went into Kuwait and I bought as many Cubans as I could and the tax on wait cu- I'm sorry Kuwait is Beirut is that the um, Kuwait's a country that a- um, Saddam Hussein in Iraq Invade it for the oil. The Kurds. No, they're Kuwaitis, so the oh. Kurds are northern Iraq. So if you think Just about listen. if you think about you have um Iraq, at the very bottom there's a very small country mm-hmm. that is very oil rich and Saddam Hussein decided is that Kuwait? Kuwait, yes. yeah. Yep. He decided that he wanted this oil. So that's what happens, and sort of that's where Iraqi freedom are sort of. 2000 ish. Um, well, it, it, it all sort of it happened pre 99. No, 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 but well, earlier than. The yeah. f- you're talking about the first. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Iraq invaded Kuwait, and then yes. what we did is the Americans and the British and whoever else was in the sort of the coalition um, went and kicked the Iraqis out of Kuwait. And so and you were in the UK. Armed forces at that yeah, time. Yeah, in the Royal okay. Air Force. Yeah. So I know some people that are in the proper military, like the the army and the Marines, might see me as sort of like um, the militia of um, British Airways mm-hmm. or maybe um, Norwegian Airways or something like that. But um, but yeah, so we flew out. So you were in Kuwait. Yeah, I was in Kuwait in like the late. In Mid- 99, I think it was. I was going to say late yeah. 90s yeah. was the first. Yeah, so 99. The first George Bush. It, it George was, Bush Sr. Yeah, right? so yeah, it okay. was the time that the Iraqis started um, sort of breaking the no-fly zone and mm-hmm. they started being a bit naughty. So we kind of um, gave them a bit of um, shock and awe and sort of um, told them to stop it. And right. then that was the catalyst later on. To and so you were buying Cuban cigars in Kuwait yeah. in 1999. Yeah, yeah. Wow. As Iraqis were breaking the no-fly uh, zone. Right, yeah, right. we're breaking the of no-fly course. zone. So I come back, and I didn't realize, because I didn't understand. I hadn't been to America at this point. And um, so I bought up all of the, like, I, I had a lot of Cuban cigars. <laughs> and um, I, I had all the like, Cuban other cigars. Other like, defending like, freedom and making yeah. the world the better place. The point of the story is Aaron was buying Cuban cigars. I've actually so, heard but, the story pre his appearance on Story yeah. Geeks. And I said, oh, yeah, you're coming on. Like but <laughs> but the story is that um, we were just about to drive on to the security bit, and it was getting through. It was an American camp. It was called Ali Al Salam, and um, I had all these Cuban cigars. And somebody's like, "Have you bought a load of Cuban cigars? You know that's an American base, so that's like bringing them on to America." <laughs> right. And I'm like, I don't know what to do, and um, so I just stuffed them all under the seat, and it was like. They could hardly fit under the seat. And I'm in the passenger seat. <laughs> cigars. And I'm, yeah, cigars. And I'm, <laughs> and I'm stuffing them all under the seat. And then we get up and there's these Americans in sunglasses and body armor all looking very, very angry. And I'm like, I'm going to get arrested. <laughs> and um, I'd never felt this before because normally when you go through a, like um, a British checkpoint, um, they'd make you step outside the car. And um, they'd search it while you were watching because they want to make sure that you can sign something to say they haven't damaged the car. Mm -hmm. But they were like, um, you've got to, sir, you've got to like stand behind the wall. And I'm like, but all my Cuban cigars. (laughs) And um, I went and stood behind the wall and the other guys were there. And I'm like, it's 50 degrees centigrade anyway, which I don't know, is 120 Fahrenheit or something like that. (laughs) And I'm stood behind the wall and I'm extra sweating. (laughs) And it's like... 
I'm like, I'm going to get arrested. And I, I'm like quite young at this point. And I got back in the car and they were like, okay, guys, you can um, carry on now. Have a nice day. And um, I reached down and put my hand under and I could feel the cigars. And I was like, this is the best day ever. <laughs> I've got so many Cuban cigars and I've not been arrested. Now, my question is, did you share them with the American soldiers? Yeah, so um, I've also got a story. I was in St. Lucia, mm -hmm. and um, I'd brought as many Cohibas as I could fit in a bag, all in the nice little tubes. So mm -hmm. I wasn't educated enough to know that you had these little cases of the humidors sure. and <laughs> stuff like that. And um, we'd just be out, and the one memorable night, we were in um, St. Lucia at a Sandals resort. So it's quite high end and we had butlers and stuff like that. And it was all pretty cool. So everybody that was there was like rich. Wait, were you in the military at this point? Yeah, I just got back from like Afghanistan or Iraq or something. And I'd saved up my money for seven months. So, um, and you, I just so you're on vacation. You're on vacation, okay, yeah. Okay. And um, I'm just there and speaking to the American guys and girls and stuff like that, having a really good time. And I've got pockets full of Cubans. And this is like, um, this is um, seven years ago. This 2011, May okay. 2011. Yep. And I'm just pulling out Cohibas and going, you want to smoke? You want to smoke? You want to smoke? <laughs> and these guys are like, um, <laughs> it's like, that's amazing. It's like, what do you want for it? Do you want me to buy it off you? And I'm like, no. It's like, and they're there smoking it. And they're like my best friend and stuff <laughs> like that. And, um, but you should it, have told them. I want 50p. Yeah, I want 50p, <laughs> but sorry, inside joke. But um, yeah, but I was just passing out Cubans like candy, and um, they're smoking all these Cubans. And it's like, to this day, I still smoke Cohibas, and, but I, I smoke Upmans and stuff like that as well, and Romeo and Juliet's. But, but this experience of the Nicaraguans and stuff like that, it's completely changed my flavor profiles because... I, I feel like I've been stuck in a very small pocket of cigars. Sure, sure. Yeah. And what I find, and I think a couple of the listeners maybe... Oh, yeah, I gave maybe you like one. a whole smattering yeah, of non-Cuban yeah, cigars. Yeah, and, yeah, and I've been yeah. working my way through them. And mm -hmm. I've been to the liquor store that has a humidor, and I've mm -hmm. bought my own. And on Saturday, I smoked five sticks, and uh, it was amazing. It was over seven True hours. True stogie geek. Welcome Crazy aboard. Slancha. <laughs> Cheers. Slancha. But this has opened my eyes so mm. that when I know when I know now I go back to England and you have this sort of outside cigar bars and stuff like that, and I expect the menus are going to be very heavily Cuban. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try and impart the small amount of knowledge that I've got here. And I'm, I expect there's you know definitely a fish and atoms there. A lot of uh, non-Cuban cigar manufacturers market cigars to... Europe, like outside of the U.S., yeah. um, it, Europe, Asia, uh, the Middle East, wherever you are, they market cigars to that, uh, those other countries that are non-Cubans. And sometimes, oftentimes maybe, they are not the same cigars that they market to the U.S. Mm. Typically, they're different sizes in a more medium body, yeah. full flavor profile, yeah. which I appreciate. And if you can get them cheaper they're probably going to be a better experience or at least very similar to your Cuban cigars. So can we try maybe, um, obviously we're going to miss it for Vegas next week, but on my final show before I go back to the UK. Um, no, wait, I, you're leaving? You just stay. What? What are you talking about? I thought we were keeping him. Yeah, mm -hmm. like bring your family out here. Like do the And opposite. stories. Like, yeah, come, man. come well, out here. Well, my family's probably listening. It's like, so um, maybe they can all come out. And I can, awesome. You can I, come swimming in my pool. I can like be a like a, a legal immigrant. Well, wait a minute. I never um, got a swimming in a pool invite, so that's pretty big. All right. Right. Me neither. All yeah. so. oh, right. <laughs> well, we'll all well, go. I'll bring you as my plus Aaron one and plus two. I don't have a baby yet. So I have a kid. Bring the kid over, <laughs> no, Joe. It'll be great. It has nothing to do with that. It's only because Aaron is so excited to wear a Speedo that I want to invite him over from my house. <laughs> but this You've gonna... never talked about Pedro or Joe wearing a Speedo. You don't want me in a Speedo. <laughs> yeah, it's, there, it, this is not going to happen. So, But, but I've it, seen... Please continue. Um, <laughs> so when we were at the um, cigar shop the other day, so w what was it you called it? The one Regency. where I, I spent a fortune. I said on. we were doing a Davidoff run. Yeah, <laughs> when we did the Davidoff run. And they have M Monte Cristos there yep. that are Dominican, yeah. I believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. and, I believe and, they're Dominican. And they come in the metal tubes as well. Yeah. Sure. And we have the metal tube Monte Cristos from Cuba. 
and I, I think we could do a, a bit of a taste and yeah, a test see to see difference. what the, the, the difference is. It's no in comparison. This. No, no, no. Yeah. I'm going to tell you a story, right? So which is better? So, so, so we're in the humidor, right? <laughs> And Aaron, you know, I'm going back and forth with, with the staff over at the Regency about what we're going to pick and blah, blah. And Aaron goes. Which I, I want to just deviate for a second. The sure. stores in Rhode Island are just amazing. Sure. I mean, mm-hmm. there's no your question. experience has been Aaron visiting oh, some of the shops. Like I've been to three now. We're spoiled. Yeah, he's we're spoiled. Me, yeah. as mm-hmm. Or maybe it's where I've been in to Rhode if Island. you count the liquor store. Mm-hmm. Pedro, do you live in door. Massachusetts? I live in Massachusetts, but I'm about... Not a great selection of 20, cigars in Massachusetts. 20 like, minutes from... Th- there is no selection of cigars yeah. where You I'm have at. to go to New Hampshire, to Dave's, no, no, no. To Dave's shop, to Two Guys Smoke Shop. He's closer to Rhode Island. If you're closer to Rhode Island, you've got to come to us to get cigars. Massachusetts... Years ago, we interviewed Dave uh, Garofalo, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, run, it basically moved his operation to New Hampshire because Massachusetts laws drove him to do that. So we're very lucky if we're in Rhode Island or New Hampshire to have access to Kirk Kendall's shops, Dave Garofalo's shops yeah. here in Rhode Island, Paul Joyle, right next door at the Havana Cigar Club, Regency. I mean, there's like tons of shops. In, Where in, do we get these well, today? These I bought online. The uh, Carlos Tarani we're smoking today are amazing. I ordered from my one of my favorite online uh, shops that I have uh, have just amazing deals. And I think that to finding an amazing deal, you have to kind of know where to look and have experienced a lot of cigars in the past to go, that cigar's on sale, I want to buy that one. And it's like one out of, or two out of 60 mm-hmm. that you're like... Oh, those are what's on sale this week. I'm going to go buy. So like every other month or so, I would say, Joe, we get maybe three or four boxes from Holt, and it's ones that I've hand-selected that I'm like, hold on. You're putting those on sale? And they're on sale from their normal $10 price to their sub $5 price, and I'm buying an entire box of them. And th- And that's the reason we're smoking what we're smoking today is – because there's fantastic deals online. Not to shun the retailers. Retailers, I can buy a sample of single cigars. I can also go to a retailer and uh, take advantage of their sales. Maybe there's something that's not selling in a local retail shop that I want to procure. Yeah. But you, you actually, on the, on the website, you actually have a whole lot of brands that you have actually tasted here. Yeah, we oh, have, yeah. We, we rate yeah. every cigar on the yeah, website. We, we, yeah, that's actually the next section that we're. we're yeah. So we're speaking at. of the next section, let's but, take a short. But break. wait a minute, can I tell you the Aaron story yeah, about really the Monte Cristo? Uh, so yeah, so, I, but, <laughs> so Aaron's in the humidor, right? This is such a classic story, right? And it's a classic at like Regency. No, I can picture it. This is like a so Joe Zemba moment. Aaron goes, "Look, I gave this exact cigar to Paul in a Cuban." Maybe we should buy this. I'm like, yeah, no. <laughs> I'm like, put it back. We're done here. Like, like I literally like shunned Aaron. Yeah, he pushed me away. Like, like, he I actually like, like, he like, manhandled me. Like I sh- he was like, <laughs> he, 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 put it back. It I looks exactly him. the same, yeah. Yeah. and it doesn't yeah. say on the tube where it's from. So right. yeah. I actually yeah. had to ask the sort of I don't know if you call him a sommelier of cigars, but mm-hmm. yeah. the cigar yeah. aficionado. Yeah. I was like, you should is uh, Tyler. Yeah, yeah, it was Tyler. Yeah, it, it was, was Tyler. Tyler. Wonderful but, guy. But he was so he was so Tyler's pumped. The man, by he was the way. so pumped yeah. because he gave you the Cuban version, and I literally like shoved him in the humidor. And like, I was like, so, but like Paul shoved would his love body, to taste like, this. Get that. If he like, told Tyler that, he would laugh his ass off. He, yeah, he, I did. he would think that. I was, was like, the dude, run a Davidoff run. Why are you yeah. grabbing this? Well, like, you have <laughs> me smoking the Davidoff. <laughs> oh yeah, he's he's all hooked. And I tell you what, in the next segment, we're gonna talk about the Davidoff art edition that you purchased. Oh yeah. Oh my. God, is it amazing? I'm glad I, I the force was strong in that one. Uh, in uh, Las Vegas, as can soon as we I have some? This one, I may light one of those up. Just can we have some Davidoff 500s when we were in Vegas? Is that what they were called? Oh well, uh, that uh, I'm I have no control of what he gets on Vegas. Can, can we talk about this for a second? When, sure. When Joe first came on the show, he had no geek references whatsoever. Oh, he definitely does now. Right. Well, yeah. So I, I, I've noticed the evolution of uh, Joe Hollywood here, and all <laughs> of a sudden, now he's just referencing the fours and talking about Vegas hackers pivoting. and all of that. Yeah, pivoting. And it, what is this? What, it, what, what uh, have you done to this man? It's very easy, uh, Pedro. <laughs> Joe first came on to help us out with Story Geeks. January Joe, 2nd of 17. Joe came on and said, well, I, you know, I do I'll sales. i to that. Uh, cheers. And cheers. So... After Joe started doing So Yeeks, I was like, 
we need a salesperson for Security Weekly. We okay. didn't. We never had a full time dedicated salesperson for Security Weekly. We had grown to the point where we needed that, and we hired Joe because Joe Excellent. was like, "I do cigars, I'm doing that for a while. I do sales too." I'm like, "Dude, I can teach you security. It's not not a problem." True. Totally cool. And now Joe, you're what? Four months? Maybe? No, not even. I'm not like even. I'm like 88 days, if if that. I was 77 last week, so I'm I'm like yeah. 81. 80, but 80 something. Pretty days. soon, sans training. <laughs> sans <laughs> training. <laughs> yes, <Sans>. sir. <laughs> Paul so, doesn't know it yet, but I'm going. Cheers. Whether he wants it or not, I'm going. This is the the <laughs> European branch right here. I've been trying to get him to 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 come so via hold Skype on, so on 88 story. days, and Joe's closed a significant amount of business and security with our guidance in teaching him security in 88 days. Now, Peter, you do security for a living, right? Yes. 88 days is not a long time to learn no, security. No, absolutely not. Yeah. Joe's kicking ass and taking names. Aaron was like, I want to come out and do like a free internship. And I'm like, did you sound cool? I'm like, come out. Like, that's basically how... It was I really we like that it. happened. Really pretty it much really how it like happened. happened. Like, Aaron was proactive and enthusiastic and said, I want to come out. And I'm like, yeah, dude, this, like I met it was a time. big risk. It was a big one. We time. spoke in the phone on both for, sides. I was like, we spoke in the phone yeah, for Aaron twenty five minutes. Yeah, yeah. The first week he's here, he's like, "Oh, I can fill in on Stu Geeks." I'm like, "See, we all made the right decision." <laughs> well, the right. first, you know, you know how he got on Stu Geeks, and then what? What? what I, I guess what he, go, he started smoking, and I'm like, "Cohiba Cuban." It's like, yeah, he starts pulling on all these Cubans, which I got none of them. But Paul got him back. It's <laughs> all about Paul's story. Well, he knew what he was it. doing. Right, right. And and I says, uh, do you smoke anything other than Cubans? And he's like, no. I'm like, we're doing a show. Yep. What's it like to Perfect. walk into a cigar shop and only have access, like have full access to Cubans with none of this awesome. rhetoric going on? You know what I mean? And All and right. Let's take a short break. Come back with the Sogies of the Week. Mm-hmm. 